let's chat about England Ireland then and dive into it. You have been working over the last day or so on an analysis piece on the end game. I want to pick your brains on that. But I want to start with Conor Murray's box kick, which seemed to be the hot button topic afterwards. And even uh, the following day, just a lot of people angry that Ireland kicked the ball away there, that Murray kicked the ball away there with 90 odd seconds to go. I'm curious as to what your interpretation of that situation was. I mean, as it happened, I didn't even think about it because to me it was probably the only decision for them to make. And I think every other team, virtually every other team at all levels really would have done the same. There's nine seconds a clock, which actually is quite a a long time in rugby. The average passage of playing rugby is about 30 seconds. And we know that a shitload can go right, can go wrong rather in in that time. Obviously, there's a big break in play before they they go and kick the ball. Chandler Cunningham South is getting treatment and then he hobbles off and leaves England with 14. But obviously, Ireland now have loads of time to discuss it. It's not Conor Murray. I think some people are confused that Conor Murray is just deciding to wing it and kick the kick the ball himself. That's a decision that's been transmitted onto the pitch by the coaches and discussed by the leaders on the pitch and they've made that call together. So it's not on him. Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was right to get out of that zone. If you're trying to play phases in there for 90 seconds... The referee is going to be really hot on your breakdown stuff. He's going to be looking for any opportunity really to penalise what is negative play, what referees see as negative play. England are just going to go absolutely all out of your breakdown. There's the potential for a knock-on in there. And, I mean, I laugh to think of the reaction if Ireland had tried to do that and got turned over and and, and lost that way. I know they, they still lost, but it would have been even worse, I think. And, and And some of the criticism of whichever player made a mistake would have been off the charts. So for me, it was the right decision. I think the execution was poor. I don't think it was Conor Murray's best kick. He doesn't make it up to a 10-meter line, which is, is kind of the, the minimum expectation on, on any exit kick. Is get beyond that. Either make a tackle beyond that or get it into touch beyond that so you're you're further up the pitch. And then Ireland just, they, they don't defend well from that last line out. And before going any further, I should say this is one of many instances in the game where Ireland came off the the, the worst because it's the last bit we we weighted much more heavily and probably disproportionately but I didn't think they defended well they were passive off the line out and they did get a little bit passive in the second half I, I thought at crucial times actually throughout the whole game where they weren't bringing their defensive line to England and they go for the the choke tackle you know they they actually think they have it out on their wide left and you can see all the the players around the choke tackle there's two Irish defenders in the the choke t- attempt on on daily it's um, Henshaw who kind of initiates it and, and, and they just swarm in around it and they're kind of just standing there watching almost ready to celebrate, you know, as we've seen in loads of instances. But but um, Furbank gets to ground. He he fights down to ground. I think it's, um, sorry, it is Furbank who carries, yeah, and Daly and Slade help him fight to ground. And now Ireland are caught tight in the short side and and they're able to get outside Aki with, with Faye Waboso and they're in behind and there's penalty advantage and, and that's kind of, it and then there's the penalty advantage closer to the posts as Ireland are, are kind of clinging on. So, yeah, I, I thought it was right call to kick, but I thought they didn't, it wasn't the best kick. And I thought they didn't defend well off the back of it. To what extent would you put some of that poor defense down to tiredness, Mert? Like, there was a moment just before it where they were so slow on a kick chase, and like you're blowing hard, but I suppose we've made a virtue out of Ireland's fitness over the last two, three years. and this seemed like a game in which England were equally well conditioned, if not arguably better conditioned, and Ireland were blowing out their holes at the end of it. And uh, as much as you say they were passive for, there were periods in across the whole game in which they were passive. Definitely felt like they were out in their feet there towards the end as well. I don't think that was it, to be honest. Like it wasn't. Yeah, it was. A, it was a physically intense game. It really was. It was a brilliant game, and England had to go to a really high level to beat Ireland. But I, to me, the the deficiencies in Ireland's performance were more on a a mental side of things. They were just off their their kind of peak and their peak focus and their peak application and execution, and that was apparent at stages throughout the the whole game, including this one for me. Like that choke tackle swarm is is one of them for me. Like it's not one the choke tackle. You've already got the defenders in there. You don't all need to honeypot around it quite so much. And they just kind of switch off a little bit there. And, and there were instances of that on the other side of the ball in the second half where they put down the 
they, they knocked on repeatedly in, in England's half in a kind of 10, 15 minute period where there's three or four of them in a row on, on, on three or four attacks in a row. And defensively, I thought there were those little lapses throughout. And we'll get into the tries and and there's pretty unique circumstances in the first two in particular. But I thought Ireland just, there was just that, just that hint of, of not being at their peak focus. A little bit like that New Zealand game where, you know, they don't get to their, their best performance and loads of players I think will feel that they didn't didn't get near their best in this game whereas England I think most of them if not all of them did and and probably outperformed their ups and numbers let's run through the tries what were the unique circumstances in those first two so the first one Calvin Nash obviously spark, uh, gets um, a, a big head injury in the tackle on Tommy Freeman so you're down a number there and he's on the ground and he can't bounce up off his feet and reload into the defensive line on that side. But it all starts, to give England their dues, it all starts with them putting brilliant pressure on James Lowe's left foot. They knew that this was going to be a big factor and they really negated from the game. Ireland's inability to exit from their own 22 was a huge factor in the match. Lowe, he, he connected poorly with his kicks and sometimes he has those days, but a lot of it was down to the pressure. And if you look at that one, it's Ben Earl just really detailed on his homework, I would imagine, in studying how Gibson Park passes the ball and not buying this feint that he does with his head where he, he tries to unbalance you. If, if people get a chance to watch it back, you'll see that Earl, he doesn't go on that feint. He actually just readjusts himself in the sprinter stance and then he explodes out of the blocks and he gets really good pressure onto Lowe's left foot. Lowe kind of scuffs the kick. It goes really low. It goes long still, but it's low and it gives Furbank time now to get back in towards the middle of the pitch and he hits Freeman. And Freeman's so powerful in that moment where Nash goes all in on the tackle. And that's a that's potentially a moment where Ireland get a massive win and follow up on their good start with a 3-0 lead. And, and that's not the case. And, and Nash comes off much the worse. But even with him on the ground, I thought they adjusted to it poorly. They definitely needed to get one more into that short side. And you can see Furlong is screaming at Tyburn to go, go. But he, he just hesitates a little bit on the left fringe of Ireland's defensive rook. And then on the right fringe of it, Doris decides to be aggressive at the scrum half, Mitchell, even though I think you can see that Gibson Park outside him is calling to kind of ease off and let's actually just try and manage this situation where they've got a, a an overlap, really, to, to put it bluntly, because Furbank works really hard to make it a four-man English attack. And so that takes Doris out of it. Now it's a four-on-two in the front line with just Gibson Park and Henshaw Gibson Park eases off completely. He jockeys, so he he takes off all line speed and he's kind of running towards the sideline backwards almost, if you if you know what I mean, towards his own trial line. But then Henshaw decides to close hard aggressively outside him and, and he can't stop the ball. Furbank's really brilliant catch pass, gets the ball to Slade and, and now they're kind of beaten. It's Crowley closing up from the backfield. He has to be attracted to Slade there and the pass goes outside him. And, and Lawrence, in fairness, it's a, an excellent fend and, and Crowley would be disappointed maybe not to recover he can't slap the fend down and, and Lawrence gets outside him. And then there's no one else swinging in the backfield from Ireland. I'm not sure if that should have been the case, but there's a few little bits there. I think even though Nash gets knocked out, they 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 could have um they could have adjusted a little bit better and and dealt with it. But I thought they didn't adjust well. I thought they didn't react to those tough situations as well as they have done in, in this game. And, and that was one of them. And then the the second try, Kieran Frawley is struggling with with his head injury if you go back to pre before they kick out of their 22 another exit that didn't go into to touch or didn't quite get the distance they wanted the england are attacking at the left people might remember tommy freeman kind of steps into touch there it's frawley who makes a tackle and frawley gets a knock on his head there and he really staggers badly at the touchline he, he struggles to get up but he gets up the ball is still in play it should have been a line out to ireland of course with freeman's foot in touch and they would have calmed it and maybe had a better exit but uh, Gibson Park box kicks and and again Ireland don't react well to it Frawley chases up that right hand side and I mean I'm, I'm not a doctor but he appears to be confused because he chases up the right hand side and then he follows the ball all the way across the pitch which he obviously wouldn't do in normal circumstances he might track it a little bit but then he realised that the defenders on Ireland's left hand side had it managed and he would have dropped back to the right hand side where England eventually score if, if you can see what I'm saying he he just seemed to be yeah discombobulated from that head injury but even still I think Ireland again could have 
adapted. You know, you can defend with 14, you know, fully clear headed uh, defenders. But for whatever reason, they have six defenders stacked in the short side. And even some of them swing in there kind of late, even though there's no one on the English attacking side in that on that part of the pitch. So they're essentially marking no one, you, you know, and then that means that when England swing to the left, you're thinking, why is Ty- Tyke Furlong there so exposed? But it's because they didn't number up well and, and he's left out towards the edge of the defence. And really, it's a pretty easy finish for, for England. Furbank doesn't even need to pass. He can actually just kind of canter home. George, uh, sorry, it's Underhill who should pass pre-contact to, to Itoje, but he offloads in behind. And even still, they, they can finish it off. So while Ireland had those head injuries happen in those passages of play, I still think that they'll be really disappointed. 